Thank you for your presence. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Open your mouth and begin to worship him. Exalt him, exalt him. Father, we thank you. Ask the Lord to speak to you tonight. Ask the Lord to speak to you tonight. That tonight will be your night of encounter. It will be your night of encounter. It will be your night of encounter. Oh, speak to me, Jesus. Ask the Lord to speak to you. 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 Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says that, and the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spoke unto me. And the Spirit entered into me. Jesus said, John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ezekiel 2, 2, and the spirit entered into me. So behind every word, the spirit of God backs his word. That's why Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Verse 3, the Bible says that, verse 2 still, the Bible says, and the spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. The spirit of God was moving. Verse 3, then God said. The spirit of God has moved tonight. Now the word is coming. After the spirit of God moves, when the word comes, the word has to do what it has been sent for. And the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. Notice his position. He was down. But the moment the spirit entered into him, he moved from down to up. Tonight, you are moving from down to up. In the name of Jesus. So in one minute, Pray like never before. Pray in faith. Asking God to give you your word. The word that is due you. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Open your mouth and pray tonight. The word, the word, the word, the word for you. The word destined for you. The word destined for you tonight. Tonight your word must come. Your word must come tonight. Speak, Lord, for your servant, hear it. Let your word come. Let your word come. Let your word come. Let the word that changes things come. Let the word that my healing word, let my healing word come. My miracle word, my breakthrough word, my promotion word, my deliverance word. My breakthrough word, my solution word, my healing word. Let my word come tonight. Let my word come tonight. Father, let my word come tonight.
tonight. Give me your word tonight. Give me your word for the next level. Give me your word for the next level. Come on, you are not praying enough. Pray like never before. Ask God to give you his word. The word for you. The word for you. The word changes things. The word changes things. The word changes things. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We call it done. Holy Spirit. Hover over us. You are the bread divider. Divide the bread equally. Let there be no lack tonight of the bread. The revelation of your word. We give you praise. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a better praise. Let's please be seated. In the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome to day two of the prophetic encounter. Uh, as you are all aware, uh, during our prophetic encounter, we take time to fast and to pray. But on this occasion, we are just praying, we are not fasting. And so I want to encourage everyone, those of you who have fasted, God bless you. But Tomorrow is the last day, so we are not fasting, but we are praying. And tomorrow, we will be partaking of communion and the anointing service. So I want you to come prepared in Jesus' name. Are you ready for the word tonight? All right, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. Ecclesiastes, for your information... Is in the Old Testament. I read. It says, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with this message I started yesterday titled Sharpen. And this is part two. Sharpen. This is part two. Yesterday, we got to understand that God is a moving God. God is constantly moving. And because he's constantly moving, he's looking for people who will together be moving with him. That's why... God, the Bible says, is no respecter of persons. So that means if in the process of moving you delay, God will leave you behind and move with those who are moving. For your information, what you are doing now, somebody was appointed to do it, they didn't do it, and God appointed you to do it. So God is constantly moving during the time of when he was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of captivity, the Bible says that God was moving in the night as a pillar of fire and during the day as a pillar of cloud. Isn't that right? He was constantly moving and guiding his people. Now, when God is moving and you stay behind, God is not the one who loses. You become the one who loses. That's why it's important for us to move at the speed of light. And for us to move on the same pace with God, we have to be sharpened. That's why the Bible says that if the iron or the axe is blunt, then more strength is required. Anything you do in life that requires more strength it's a sign or an indication that that area of your life is dull. Any area of your life that requires more strength is a sign that that area of your life is dull. You haven't sharpened 
that area of your life. That's why the Bible says that if the axe is dull, then much strength is required. Much strength is required. And the Bible says that if the axe is dull, it is your responsibility to sharpen it. It's not God's responsibility. It's not your parents' responsibility. It's not your pastor or your prophet's responsibility to sharpen it. It is your responsibility to sharpen the edge of your axe. How many of, I mean, I, I was going to say, how many of you, uh, when you were in school, used a pencil? But I'm sure all of us here who are matured enough, when we went to school, we used pencil. And when you use your pencil, at some point, either the tip gets broken, or if you're a very good student, you use your pencil very well and it doesn't break. The bad student's pencil always breaks. But the good students will use their pencil until the lead is finished. And once the lead is finished, what do you do? You take your sharpener and you sharpen it. It's, it's not your teacher's responsibility to sharpen your pencil for you. It is your responsibility. So that means that where you are now is your responsibility. Where you are in life now is not the responsibility of no witch or wizard. It is your responsibility. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the Bible says if your axe is dull and you do not sharpen it, then much strength is required. But the Bible says that wisdom brings success or wisdom is profitable to direct. So that means if we are going to be sharper in life, we have to go for wisdom. Why? Because wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. What is principal? Principal means the head. The number one. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get what? Wisdom. And the Bible says that in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Every problem you have is a wisdom problem. You don't have money problem. You don't have health problem. You have wisdom problem. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it when the church is quiet. That's why it's time for us to sharpen ourselves. I prophesy over you, by the time you leave here tomorrow, as we have already had testimonies of just one day of the prophetic encounter, people are already getting sharpened. By the time we leave here tomorrow, you'll be sharper than sharper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So quickly, how many of you want to succeed? Because the Bible says wisdom brings what? Success. So how many of you want to succeed? Only one person lifted up her hands. God bless you. You will succeed like never before. As a matter of fact, your success will threaten those who have gone ahead of you. Are you ready? Your success is going to be a restorative success. Everything you've lost in the past, God is restoring the years unto you. Before the end of this month, by the middle of this month, you will have an encounter with God in an unusual way. In the mighty name of Jesus. So to succeed in life, you must have a high level of five things. Number one, you must have a high level of desire. Number one, you must have a high level of desire. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 from the King James Version. 
Now, let's read from verse 22. Verse 22, Jesus, I mean, the background of this scripture has to do with Jesus cursing the fig tree. And the disciples saw it, and the, Peter said, Jesus, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. And Jesus said, Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus said to Peter, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Verse 23, the Bible says that Jesus said, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. So that means you have to speak to your mountains. Don't keep quiet at the mountains. You speak aggressively to the mountain. And I decree to every mountain that has hindered your destiny moves tonight. Amen. I said it moves tonight. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. So Jesus said, for verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. He shall have Amen. whatsoever he says. So this evening, as you say it, you will have it. Amen. I said, as you say it, you will have it. Amen. As I decree tonight, you will see it tomorrow. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 24 of Mark chapter 11. Then Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Key word there is what? Desire. Do you have some desires? Do you have some desires? I said, do you have some desires? So Jesus said, what things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you have received them. And you shall have them. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus said, therefore I say unto you, that what things soever you desire. So to succeed in life, you must have a high level of desire. Your desire must be strong. A strong desire to succeed. A strong desire to come out of poverty. A strong desire to come out of sickness and disease. You must have a strong desire. Your level of desire determines your level of success. Others might see mountains. Others might see obstacles. But with your strong desire, you see success. And I prophesy over someone from today, your desires will be manifested. To succeed in life, you must have a high level of devotion. Number two, you must have a high level of devotion. Luke chapter 18 verse 28. The Bible says that then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. Somebody said devotion. devotion. When you are devoted to something, you leave everything else and follow what you are devoted to. Peter said, Jesus, we have left everything. We have left our wives, we have left our children, we have left our businesses and we are following you. Why? Because we are devoted to you. Your devotion is demonstrated by what you follow. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. If you are devoted to God, you follow God, you follow after God hardly. Yes. David said, I follow hard after God. Yes. Those who are devoted follow after God hard. Remember the woman who, whose daughter was sick? The Syrophoenician woman. And the Bible says that Jesus went to the seaside to rest. And all of a sudden she showed up. And she started shouting at Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. My daughter is at the point of dying. And Jesus ignored her. The more she cried, the more Jesus ignored her. The more she cried, the more she, the disciples said to Jesus, Jesus, can you send her away? 
you know why she needed something she was devoted she needed the healing of her daughter and after all her dedication and devotion Jesus turned to her and said woman we don't give the 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 bread to dogs that means you and your daughter you are dogs now when you are devoted to something it doesn't matter what people call you yeah. are you following what I'm saying they say people who are not devoted their little name calling oh you are a dog Ah, I came to the church for the first time and the pastor called me a dog does he know who I am who are you before God you and I are nothing this woman was so devoted she didn't take no for an answer and after everything, the Bible says that Jesus turned around and said, Oh woman, great is your faith. Be done unto you according to your faith. Somebody is in this prophetic encounter tonight. It shall be done unto you according to your faith. Sound a living amen. Why? Because she was dead. Bible says that Peter said to Jesus, we have left everything and followed you. What are we going to get? And Jesus said, those who are devoted don't lack in life. Jesus said, everything you left to follow me in this life, you will get it and in the life to come. He said, nobody has left their mother, their father, their brother, their wife. Remember, he didn't say wives. Wife. He didn't say husbands. He said husband. All the other things were plural. Houses, lands, everything, brothers, sisters. But when it came to wife and husband, he said husband. Wife. Somebody said, oh, Pastor, I thought Jesus said husbands. Or oh, wives. He will have given him the passport to get more. The devil is a liar. So, Based on their dedication or their devotion, Jesus said, you are going to get more that you sacrifice for me. Amen. To succeed in life, you must have, number three, a high level of discipline. Amen. A high level of discipline. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, from verse 24 to 27. Glory be to God. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24 to 27. Now notice Paul is saying something very interesting here. Paul said, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize so run that you may obtain. In other words, don't run aimlessly. This year is not a year to run aimlessly. No vision. Somebody is going to holiday in, in Tenerife. You say, oh, I, I, I'm not doing anything. I'm going with you. And then you go and they quarantine you for 14 days. <laughs> aimlessly. Are you following what I'm saying? You don't just follow, follow, follow. You are Miss Follow, follow. You are Mr. Follow, follow. What's your vision? So Paul said, you don't just run. You must run to obtain. Verse 25. Verse 25. The Bible says, and he said, and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. Beating the air is called shadow boxing. How many of you likes boxing here? You like boxing. Did you watch the Tyson Fury match? Yeah. He didn't win by hitting the air. 
when you see your opponent here, you are hitting the air. No. That's called shadow boxing. Paul said, I do not fight as one that beats the air. Verse 27 is key. Now remember we're talking about high level of what? Discipline. But he said, I keep my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway or disqualified. High level of discipline. Have you not heard athletes who have achieved so much in life and then later on they have achieved so many medals and later on you realize that they cheated, used drugs because of lack of discipline and they lost everything. Discipline is key. Number four, to succeed in life, you must have a high level of determination. Determination. Second Chronicles chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says that then Solomon determined to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal house for himself. Then Solomon determined. Now, this is very interesting because Solomon had everything before he showed up for the building of the temple. But yet, without determination, he couldn't build God's house. Are you following what I'm saying? Determined. The Bible says that Jesus was determined. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. That is determination. How determined are you? Sometimes your determination will be tested. Sometimes your determination can be your faith and it will be tested. You have pain in your body and faith says don't say you have faith. You have pain in your body. So you have to be determined to speak against that pain. The Bible says that Solomon was determined to build a house for the name of the Lord. If you are going to do exploits this year, you have to be determined. You have to be determined that nothing is going to cause you to backslide. You have to be determined. The walk of faith is a walk of determination. High level of determination. People will come and and, and, and discourage you but their discouragement must not discourage you are you following what I'm saying high level of determination high level of don't wait for anybody to encourage you this year the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord determination number five to succeed in life you must have a high level of dedication. So number one, you must have a high level of desire. Number two, you must have a high level of devotion. Number three, you must have a high level of discipline. Number four, you must have a high level of determination. And number five, you must have a high level of dedication. John chapter 12 verse 24. The Bible says that Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Somebody say dedication. Dedication. Dedication simply means getting ready to die for what you believe you have been called for. If you are not ready to die for it, you are not dedicated. (laughs) 
Jesus said, I'm so dedicated to die on the cross that even Peter tried to convince him. Peter said to Jesus, Jesus, you know, you, know you don't have to die. Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, you Satan. Some of us have missed our destiny because we are not dedicated. Some of us are not dedicated to anything. A little challenge, we run away. A little challenge, we run away. You see the woodcutter we saw yesterday? He was dedicated to the wrong thing. Exerting his strength. Meanwhile, what he needed was wisdom. This year you will not lack wisdom. Amen. The world will come and seek the wisdom that God has placed in you. In the name of Jesus, receive right now the spirit and the impartation of the spirit of wisdom. I said receive right now the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom to do exploits this year in the name of Jesus. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Write this down. God calls every believer to model five key qualities. Because if we're talking about being sharpened, there are some qualities that must show in your sharpness. There must be some qualities that must show. So there are five qualities God calls every believer to model. Number one, excellence. Number one is excellence. Number two is integrity. Number three is faithfulness. Number four is love. And number five is service. Number one is excellence. Number two is integrity. Number three is faithfulness. Number four is love. And number five is service. We're going to look at them quickly. So first one is excellence. Matthew chapter five, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. It says, let your light, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. Now notice carefully, Jesus said, let your light so shine. When you're operating in excellence, you shine. The Bible says that have you seen a man that is diligent? Or have you seen a man that excels in his gift? He will not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. If you excel, you will stand before kings. David, ex sorry, Joseph excelled. Yeah, David also Joseph excelled so much that even in the pit, he had a price tag on him. David excelled on the desert so much so that when the king was looking for somebody to play the harp, they said there is a son of Jesse. His name is David. We know that when he plays for you, that evil spirit will be taken away. Why? Because you can't hide excellence. You can't discriminate against excellence. It is time for the church to walk in excellence. It is time for Christians to model excellence for the world to see because Jesus said, we are the light of the world. And as the light of the world, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see. That they may see. If you are operating in excellence, they can't keep you down. In your office, 
in your organization, they might not like your face, but if you are operating in excellence, if you are the only one who knows what they don't know, they will come knocking on your door. Excellence does not just mean the way we do our jobs, but it also means staying abreast of how we do our jobs. God desires to reveal his innovations in his creation. Listen, you will not compete in the marketplace today unless you make a commitment to stay abreast with innovation. That is what good stewardship in excellence is all about. Today we just heard that a company called Fly B, which I'm sure many of you know, went into administration. Two or three months ago, a major one went into administration, Thomas Cook. It's been around for over 200 years. They were not ready to be innovative. They said, this is how it was. This is how it shall be. And forever we shall remain the same. And others came and took over. Oh God. You will not be the same again. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will create a strong desire of excellence in your heart. You see, unfortunately, many Christians thought that being a Christian is just being spiritual. No, in this church, it's not just spiritual. It's body, spirit, and soul. We are raising a holistic person. Are you following what I'm saying? A holistic Christian. A relevant Christian. Someone who is excellent in the house of God and excellent at work. Some questions to consider on the area of excellence. How is your workplace acts? Does he not need sharpening? Or does he need sharpening? What are the areas in your working life that you need or needs to be sharpened? What innovations are needed to ensure that you will be the head and not the tail in your profession? It's not just about saying, as for me, I'll, I'll never be the tail. I'll forever be the head. It's one thing saying it. It's another thing doing what you are saying. I've seen many Christians at the beginning of the year don't confess. This year, my goal is to lose weight. This year, my goal is to lose weight. This year, my goal is to lose weight. This year, I'm going to the gym. This year, I'm going to the gym. Ten years down the line, they registered year one. They are paying direct debit. Jim is taking the money. Jim is taking the money. <laughs> but they have never gone to the gym. <laughs> It's one thing to say, I will go to the gym, and it's another thing to go to the gym. (laughs) Glory be to God. Some of you are remembering the direct debit you've set up for that gym tonight. (laughs) Go home and cancel that direct debit. Praise God. Begin today to evaluate action steps you need to take to have a very sharp excellence acts. Ask the Holy Spirit to inspire innovation and excellence in you today that will help you to become sharper in that area of your life. Number two is integrity. Integrity. First Samuel chapter 12 from verse 2. What, what is integrity? Integrity means your word and your character and your actions are one. They are integrated. They are intertwined. They are in unison. 
You can't separate your word from your character. Some, there are some Christians, when they tell you, sit here, I'm coming, you better get up. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people when they tell you, you call them, ask, where are you? Oh, I'm just by the corner. <laughs> two minutes, give me two minutes. <laughs> two minutes become two hours. <laughs> no integrity. No integrity. And unfortunately, we have a lot of such in the church. I'm not even going to talk about Christians. Let's talk about the men of God. Unfortunately, there is no integrity in the pulpit today. Many men and women of God exaggerate things. Lie about everything. Oh, the day of heaven will be a very interesting day. Integrity is key. Is key. Integrity is key. There was one man of God, Bishop to the base mark, he said, there was a group who, when they took him to the back of their car, opened the boot and showed him millions of dollars. And they said to him, we just need to use your church as a transit point of, of transact, transacting financial businesses. It has nothing to do with you. We just need your church bank account. All we do is wire money to come through your church and then we take it out again and all these millions will be for you. He could have done it in the dark. Nobody would have seen him. Same Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, the devil took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said to Jesus, Satan said to Jesus, all you have to do is just worship me. Bow secretly. Nobody is here. God is not here. The Holy Ghost is not here. Peter is not here. Peter is a talkative. You know Peter? If Peter is here now, Peter is going to spread the news into the newspaper. Peter is not here. Judas is not here. None of them are here. Just bow secretly. Just pow. And all these things that you see, I'll give it to you. You see, integrity simply means what you are in private is what you are in public. As a Christian, there is nothing like it's my private life. No, you don't have a private life. You have one life. It's called the life of Jesus. You model that life privately and publicly. Praise God. Amen. You're not a wife in the house. You are insulting your husband. You, your husband talks and says, look, look at you. You call yourself a man. Look, <laughs> look. And you are in the church. You are in the church. Will you come to the church? Before pastor says anything, oh pastor, what do you want? Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, pastor. Oh, yet your, your husband, your husband is the head of your home. Pastor is not the head of your home. You can't honor pastor more than you honor your husband. Oh, praise God. Oh, this is getting good. This is, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When my wife and I got married, one of the key things, it doesn't matter who comes to visit us in our house. It doesn't matter their level. When she brings drink or water, she'll give me first before she gives whoever is there. When she cooks the food, I'm the first to say, oh baby, your food is lovely. But now my children have beaten me. Before I say, the food is nice. Now there's one person in our family who is always beating us. Before we taste the food, she has already tasted it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, mommy, for the food. It's very nice. So I'm looking for a strategy now. <laughs> to beat her. Praise God. Before anybody says the food is nice, I would have said it first. 
Honor privately, honor publicly. Are you following what I'm saying? Integrity is key. There is no integrity in the church any longer. There's no integrity. People are living beyond their means. No integrity. And putting pressure on the church people. Living beyond their means and putting pressure. Are you following what I'm saying? Put in pressure. No, live within your means. Life is lived in stages. Are you following what I'm saying? Today, your, tie, your, 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 your trousers might be a polyester. Praise God. Wear your polyester. Wear your poly and ester together. Are you following what I'm saying? There was a time in this church I had only one suit. One suit. For years, one suit. Every Sunday, the same suit. Every Sunday. One day, I bought, after many years, I bought one more suit. Then one of the members came and said, Pastor, today you are wearing a new suit. I said, oh, so you have been seeing me wearing the same one suit for years, and you didn't buy me one. I didn't tell her. I said it in my heart. But now she knows I'm, I'm telling her that. Praise God. Life is lived in stages. Don't allow anybody to put pressure on you. Are you following what I'm saying? I, I know a man of God. I'm not saying this to, to dishonor anyone. I know a man of God who had a private jet. And she was going to, he was going to preach in a certain nation. He couldn't fool his jet in and out. He fooled the jet just to get in. And he said after that if they had not given him money to put fuel in the jet, he would have gone on a commercial flight back and left the jet there. And you see that man, you say, oh wow, he's got a jet, but you don't know what he's going through. You see a lady come to church and wearing a new shoe. Don't look at my shoe, it's not new. <laughs> it's wearing a new shoe. But you don't know that new shoe is pinching her. <laughs> she, <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, my wife and I, my wife and I, uh, many years ago, we went to Brighton. We went to Brighton and we saw a lady wearing a high heel. And she was struggling. She was struggling. She was falling. The heel was like 10 inches long. And the guy was holding her hand. I said, This one, they are not married. This one, they are not married. Look at that. The, you can see this lady is suffering. <laughs> She was walking like an antelope. <laughs> I said, sister, why are you so suffering like this? Praise God. Why are you suffering? You don't know that suffering, that sister is suffering. So don't go and copy her and say, I want the same shoe. Praise God. I said, praise God. Maybe you have a, a long toe. She doesn't have a long toe. You wear that shoe. Your toe is telling you, get me out of this shoe now. I don't want to be in this shoe. Get me out now. That's why when we are in church, you are checking the time. What time is the pastor going to close? And you can't sit still. Your, your leg is... <laughs> Come on, why are you suffering? If all you have is sleepers, wear your sleepers and come to church. Glory be to God. Integrity. First Samuel chapter 12 from verse 2. This is very important. The Bible says, I now behold the king walk before you and I'm old. This is talking about Samuel. And gray-headed. And behold, my sons are here with you. And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am. Witness against me before the Lord. 
and before his anointed, whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken out of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is thy is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is a witness. Can God say the thing about the same about you? Amen. That's integrity. Yes. That's integrity. Amen. When God called, it, it's interesting today, my wife and I were talking that we don't know how God has sustained us from day one in this commission. How God has, we don't put no pressure on anybody in this church. No financial pressure whatsoever on anybody in this church. Because of integrity, nobody must come to this church feeling guilty whether they can give or they can't give. Money should not become a stumbling block to God's people getting saved. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Integrity. Integrity is so important. We were saying today, we don't know how God has taken us throughout these years. Never lacked. Never borrowed. Not under any pressure. All the branches that we started we were taking care of them from here. No pressure. She was saying today, there has never been one day that we've sat down and thought, how are we going to pay this? How are we going to buy this? We have never raised funds in this church. Never stand and say, we are raising funds to buy something. No, no, no. Give on your own level. That's integrity. If it's one pound, give it from your heart. If it's two pounds, give it from your heart. Like Jesus, when we lift that one pound to heaven, we break the limitation and he multiplies it. Integrity is no longer in the church. Christians can't do business with other Christians. What has happened? Christians. Christ I am now. You have the Holy Ghost in you. You have God in you. You have Jesus in you. Yet the fear of God is no longer in the church. No integrity. Pastors are playing with other men's wives in the church. Come to this hotel number 412. There's a special prayer I want to pray for you. The devil is a liar. Amen. Calling other people's wives and girls in the church at odd hours. Say, I have a prophetic word for you. <laughs> the devil is a liar. And you know when people are desperate, they do desperate things. Yes. Everybody gets up today, I'm a prophet. A prophet of what? A prophet of doom. No integrity. No integrity. Some of the things that are going on in the church, you will be shocked. People are going for all kinds of stuff. There are some places where they have buried human beings under the pulpit. Where they claim the altar of God is a human, a live human being has been buried under there. What is happening? What is happening? How did we get here? 
How did the church get here? How did the church get here? How did we get here? Jesus is weeping. He said, I stand at the door and knock. His own church is at the door and knocking. On his own church. His own church. He doesn't have the keys to his own church any longer. So he's standing at the door and knocking. No more integrity. But I pray for you. That the spirit of God will come upon you. And you have a strong desire to walk upright before God. Number three is faithfulness. Luke chapter 16 verse, from verse 10. It says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in the much. If I therefore have been faithful in the, if you therefore have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is yours? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. What is Jesus saying? Be faithful to God. Faithfulness. If it's working, be faithful. If it's not working, be faithful. Jesus said, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who will commit to you yours? I remember when we started the church many years ago in London. I bought a church car, gave it to some members in the church there. The way they drove the car, my heart. The way they drove the car into potholes, damaged the lights, lights broken, car broken. They don't look. I said, wow, you can't take care of God's car. How do you think you'll ever have your car? Take care of another man's. Take care of another person's child now, and God will give you your own child. You are living in a rented house now. Take care of that house like it's yours. Pay the rent on time. Don't say we are in England. If I don't pay rent for three months, they can't just come and evict me. We have to go through court process, six months, blah. No, don't be a wicked steward. Pay the rent now. Don't, don't, don't eat. After you've eaten the curtain in the house, you, you don't, you just eat and you don't wash your hands and you wipe it on the curtain. Who is going to give you yours? No wonder you don't have your own house. You are struggling. God, I ban you. It's not devil. It's you. You are the own devil. Devil, devil, I've been renting for years. The, the devil of tenancy is going up by fire, by, by fire, by Nothing is moving. Nothing is moving because you are not faithful. I know you don't like good terms. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You are not faithful. Some of you go to the office. You are not faithful with the office hours. The hours they are paying you. You are on Facebook. You are on Snapchat. You are on WhatsApp. Instead of working, you are on WhatsApp, Twitter, and then you go to the toilet 30 minutes. <laughs> you know. You are not faithful. You are believing God for promotion. It's not coming. It's not because God doesn't love you. Because you are unfaithful. You are unfaithful. God can trust you. God has to trust you on level one before you can move to level two. <laughs> I know we are living in a country where we do mass promotion in education. But from where I came from, we don't do mass promotion. You have to write the test. If you fail, you stay in that class. We came to meet some people's father in our class. <laughs> we used to call them somebody's father. And they used to give beat us, you know. 
They had beard. They are in class six. Beard. He's filled the vessels. <laughs> Somebody's father. Because you are not faithful. If you are faithful and you pass, you'll be promoted. But in the kingdom, when you fail, you'll be there. It's like going around in circle. Can I challenge you? Go home today and check your life. Examine. The Bible puts it this way. Examine your life and see if you are still in the faith. Examine your life and see where you are going around in circle. Every year, you are in the same spot. It's like you are not moving the same spot. Examine that area and check whether you have been faithful in that area. Number four, love. Are you getting something out of this? First John chapter 3 from verse 15 to 18. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So that means if you hate Jesus calls you a murderer. And Jesus said, no eternal life is abiding in anyone who hates. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever has this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shut his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in, in tongue, but let us love in deed and in truth. Love is not talk, talk. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Oh. It's not love. It's not talk. Oh, I love you. Jesus, I love you. No, it's not love. You know you don't love him. You know you're, you are coming to him because what you can get. You don't love him. You genuinely don't love him. Love is not talk. Love is demonstrated. Praise God. Sometimes I travel and I'm coming through duty free. Every, all I have left, something little, I have to use it to buy the most expensive perfume for my wife. That's love. I don't buy anything for myself. I buy for her. Love is laying your life down for the other. When was the last time you bought something for your wife? Clear your throats now. <laughs> Praise God. Now, not only the, 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 the husband, the wife. When was the last time you also bought something for your husband? Where's the love? You know, when I gave my life to Christ, I'll go to church and I'll pray and say, God, show me who, who, who is in need in the church. And I'll give them money. And, and as a young man, I only give older people older women money. I don't give no money to no young girl. The, the young girl say, ah, the guy likes me. No, no, no. Give it to older, older people. If I'm a pastor and I see a lady in the church has a need, it goes through my wife. My name is not attached to it. I go through the church praying and say, this person has a need. God, open my eyes so I can bless someone. Where was the last time you prayed that prayer? And say, Lord, open my eyes to see a need in the church. Amen. To see a need in the church. That brother has a need. That sister has a need. Lord, help me to meet that need. That's love. Where, where, where has the love of Christ gone? These days, our prayers, Lord, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me more than that brother. Bless me more than that sister. Oh, bless me. No. What happened to the church? What's happened to us? Where is the love of God? We don't even pray for souls no more. All right, let's finish. Number five, last one. Service. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 25. It's a servant. Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service. 
as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Verse 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. There is no respect of persons. Hallelujah. The last one is service. This was the scripture my wife used to quote. Colossians 3.23. It says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. That is what it means to be a service driven Christian. Don't be, don't be trying to be men pleasers. Be a God pleaser. Everything you do, you see, when God is pleased with you, it doesn't matter who hates you. Are you following what I'm saying? When God is pleased with you, he will cause ravens to feed you. He will cause ravens to bring you bread and meat morning, afternoon, evening. He will take care of you. Just, just be a God pleaser. Just be a God pleaser. Let your service be unto God. And see if God will not elevate you. In Jesus name. Did you receive it tonight? Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a better praise. We are sharpening ourselves. We are sharpening ourselves in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. You are going to pray one prayer. Say, Lord, give me grace to become everything you have spoken to me tonight. Grace to become. Grace to become. In the name of Jesus. Pray like never before. Just one minute before we partake of the communion. Grace to become. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Grace to become. Grace to be a doer of the word. Not a hearer only. Grace to be a doer. 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 Lord, give me the grace. Give me the grace to be shopping. Give me the grace to be a doer of your word. Grace to be a doer of your word. Grace to be a doer. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace, Lord. Great grace. Great grace. Grace to be a doer of the word. Grace to be a doer. Grace to be a doer. Talk to God. Ask him to give you grace. Grace, 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 grace. Grace to be a doer. The enablement. The enablement. The enablement. The enablement. Grace to be a doer. 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 Grace to be a doer of the word. Grace to be a doer of the word. Grace to be a doer of the word. Lord, give us grace. Give us grace. Give us grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. To do your word. To do your word. To do your word. Give us grace, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for great grace. Grace to do your word. Grace to become the word. John 1, 14, the Bible says that, And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. 
Father, we thank you for grace to become the way. May this word not depart from us. May we not be hearers of your word only, but may we be doers of your word. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Every hand lifted, every hand. There is an unusual grace in this house. There is an unusual grace. Father, we have lifted up our hands as a sign of surrender. Jesus, you never came to condemn us, but you came to give us life. Your word never condemns us, but your word lifts us up out of the doldrums of life, out of the merry clay to set us upon the mountains. Father, we thank you. Every hand lifted in this, this church tonight and across the world, the thousands of people who are watching across the world, let that same grace come upon them. Let grace to become, come upon them in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We call it down. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Father, we thank you for the communion table. As we partake of this communion tonight, we decree and declare that we are covered by the precious blood of Jesus. No weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against us shall prosper. When the angel of death comes near us, when he sees the blood, he will pass over. We are exempted from every form of calamity. We are exempted from every form of sickness. We are exempted from every form of virus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your word says that you put a distinction between the Egyptians and your children. Therefore, as we partake of your body and your blood tonight, put a distinction between us and them. We thank you. We call it done. In Jesus' name. As you partake of this communion tonight, healing will become your portion. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Let's partake of it prayerfully. anointing here is in your home you are healed no death will come near you there shall be no casualty you are protected from every demonic force as we partake of this communion in Jesus name Father we thank you for the communion table thank you for total healing every heart desire of prayer we came with tonight we thank you for answers to our prayers Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Deliverance from any death. In the name of Jesus. We call it down. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Let's give Jesus a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Did you receive it tonight? Hallelujah. Well, we... In our standing position, we've come to the end of the service. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. We want to take this opportunity to welcome and appreciate those of us who are worshiping with us uh, in here for the first time and online for the first time. If today is the first time you're worshiping with us, you're welcome. This is Solution Chapel International. We love you. 
We appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming. You mean a lot to us. We appreciate and value you. Let's appreciate those of us who are worshiping with us for the first time. Just show us your hands. First time, we love you. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Let's share the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that Christ in you is a hope of glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen. The Lord give you peace on every side. Amen. May he cause you to be the head and not the tail. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. Please, tomorrow is the last day. We start at half seven tomorrow. There will be anointing service in addition to the communion don't miss it. There's so much to share with you, but I don't think we have the time. So tomorrow, I'm really going to share the meat of this message with you. Don't miss it. I'm going to jam a few things, and I'll share the meat of this shopping with you. After tomorrow, I promise you by the word of God, you won't be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Even if you don't want to be sharpened, you will be sharpened by us by automatically in Jesus. God bless you. We love you. See you tomorrow. Have a good night.